Congratulations on your admittance to the Electrical Engineering BSE in the School of Electrical, Computer, and Energy Engineering in the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering. This webinar is for new online students. Important, this video is in lieu of you participating in the live advisor facilitated webinar. If you do not participate in the live new student webinar, you will not get advisor intervention for your transfer courses or recommendations following watching this video. I encourage you to please email us at askeeonline at asu.edu and register for the new online student webinar. What we'll cover in this seminar, program curriculum, the graduation audit or DARS as we call it, transfer credit evaluations, registration, ASU online format, strategies for success, academic calendar. The electrical engineering BSc curriculum is 120 hours of required coursework. This is not uh, is a very prescribed program, if you will. It's very prerequisite driven from the first semester all the way up to your final semester. There are five math classes. However, based on your math assessment, or if you've transferred in a previous course like Math 117 or Math 170, you could potentially be taking seven math classes if you have to take the assessment. There's one general chemistry class for engineers. However, if you've transitioned over general chemistry, you must have completed the equivalent of general chemistry one and two at your previous institution. Three physics classes, 22 credit hours of lower division, specific electrical engineering core coursework, 47 credit hours of upper division specific electrical engineering core coursework, including a six credit year long um, capstone project. And then all students at ASU must complete first year composition, English 101 and 102, and have completed 15 credits, including three credits of that as an upper division, humanities and social behavioral general studies requirement. Electrical engineering, um, the BSc is a broad program. It's really designed to teach core electrical engineering concepts and introduce you to these six specialization areas. The goal is to really prepare you to be diverse and work in a variety of industries upon graduation. Electronic circuits, physical electronics and photonics, electromagnetics, communications and signal processing, control systems, and electrical power systems. Many of you ask about your degree audit and how many credits have transitioned over. That's where the graduation audit or DARS comes into play. This is the official record of courses completed towards your degree. And when you apply to graduate, the graduation office is going to run an audit and make sure you have completed all the requirements. As you can see on the right, this is a snapshot of what your MyASU looks like. On the right hand side below your name, you're going to see a box that says My Programs. Click on Degree Progress directly underneath your program and click on Graduation Audit or DARS to view your prog progress towards your degree. The Graduation Audit or DARS, you're going to hear that a lot throughout the course of your uh, time here at ASU. It is a dynamic document that updates as courses are enrolled in, they're completed, or you've transferred a credit and it's applying. So in the background, it's updating, but every time you add something to your degree audit, let's say you registered for a class and now you wanna see it fulfilling the correct requirement on your DARS, you have to rerun the DARS to see a new document. Now the requirements are not organized the same way your major map or flowchart is organized in the order in which you'll take your degree. It is organized from top to bottom, general studies at the top. So those humanities, English composition, lower division major requirements, and then upper division down below that, rather than the chronological order, as I mentioned, of the degree plan. If you are a transfer student with a significant amount of transfer hours, you will notice a pie chart at the top and a bar graph of your degree audit. Please disregard reviewing that since these reflect the total number of credits completed, not degree requirements. So you could have transitioned over, maybe you already have a degree, 
those credits are going to be included in that pie chart. So it's going to look like you're already almost done with your degree requirements, and that's not necessarily the case. University general studies, as it applies to math, science, literacy, and critical critical inquiry are included in the BSE degree plan because the program requires specific courses in those areas. The humanities and social behavioral science general studies courses are chosen by the student and 15 credits must be satisfied. In order to run this, again, go to my programs, click on degree progress first, graduation audit, and then there's also an explainer of experience here too, in case you'd like to review that, but click on the degree audit. Then you're gonna notice the default for whatever program that you're in. And obviously you're gonna be electrical engineering here. If you'd like to select a different program to see how your transfer hours would apply to another degree, let's say for example, you were almost finished with a business degree somewhere else. And you're like, wow, you know, I'd really like to graduate more quickly. You could select this, click on this link and select B for business and then run the degree audit to see how your class classes would transition to business. If you're not interested in that, obviously you're gonna just click run default program because it's gonna run the program that you're in. Transfer credit guide. So for those of you who have transitioned courses that do not show up in the degree audit in the appropriate bucket. So let's say you, you, said, you thought to yourself, wow, I thought I was gonna get credit for Calc 1 and Calc 2. It's not applying in the degree audit. That doesn't necessarily mean those classes are not considered equivalent to our classes. What that means is we've probably never seen those classes from the school you attended here at ASU previously by any other student. So you can go to the transfer credit guide by in the search engine on your My ASU, go to course search and this box will pop up and you're gonna see here, submit course for evaluation. This is what that looks like. And you're going to need to su uh, submit the course for evaluation with a syllabus. You're gonna select the college, course prefix, number, the credit hours, the term and year you took it, the title of the class, any optional notes. So let's say for example, maybe you attended a quarter system school and three classes in math would be equivalent to our Calc 1. You need to let the transfer guide know here I have math one, math two, and math three. That should be equivalent to math 265 at ASU. You're going to need to submit each course individually and then make that note for each class so they evaluate them together and not independently. Here's where you upload the syllabus. And if the syllabus is part of a URL, you can click, hit, you know, add that here and then submit course for evaluation. You will receive an email back that says it's been submitted and it'll take five to seven business days for you to receive a response. The reason we require the syllabus versus a course description is because the syllabus lays out that comprehensive plan for the course, including content, learning objectives and outcomes, assessment overviews, so how are your course grades determined, schedule of assignments, et cetera. A course description is really just a brief entry in a school's course catalog that describes the concepts covered in the course. It's not usually sufficient for transfer evaluation determination since it lacks a lot of the information listed above. The university general studies requirements that I mentioned earlier in the humanities and social behavioral studies are 15 credits of required coursework. You can go over this with your assigned advisor. How to find those general studies classes? In the class search engine, you're going to click on advanced search. Then you're gonna see this drop down menu populate. You can select upper division, lower division. You can check these boxes for humanities and social behavioral studies, et cetera. The university general studies requirement of literacy and critical inquiry, you're gonna notice that at the very top of your general studies requirements that will appear in red until the very end of your degree plan. As I mentioned earlier, all the literacy, science, and math requirements in general studies will be satisfied by the degree components in the major map. The only general studies you'll have to select are those humanities and social behavioral studies. How does the AON, ASU online format work? work? We, do, we do use Canvas, and all of the lower division one and 200 level coursework is in the seven and a half week long A and B session classes. A and B sessions in fall and spring 
overlap the full 15 week long traditional C session classes. And what to, when you get to be a junior and senior, all of your three and 400 level courses will be in that full 15 week traditional C session, including EEE 241, which is a second semester sophomore class and it's electromagnetics. Our faculty believe that this class is required to be taken in a 15 week long session for the content. Now, if you choose to take classes over summer, in this particular degree plan, the only classes you will find in the six week long summer A and B sessions will be math, humanities, social behavioral studies, and in C session over summer, which are eight weeks long, you'll find your engineering, chemistry, and physics classes. We don't encourage summer, we look at it as sort of a catch up semester. So let's say you were missing a prerequisite and you might wanna go over summer to, you know, to catch up. It's a great semester to do it. Many of our online students go full time, but as you can imagine, the reason we moved many of our upper division courses to the full 15 week session is because the content is intense and we really want you to learn the material. The ASU online format, of course, is the same faculty and accreditation as your Tempe uh, counterparts. Um, it is a four year program when you're taking a minimum of 30 credits per academic year, which means fall and spring of required coursework. So, of course, attending part time like most of our online students do because you're working adults, it's going to increase the amount of time to degree completion. Typically, our students complete in about six to seven years if they're attending part time. Setting yourself up for success is truly important. Expect to devote 20 to 30 hours per week of study time for each seven week, half week long, three or four credit, credit hour math, science, or engineering course. And when possible, pair lab courses with non-lab courses. As an example, FSE 100, which is a first semester intro to engineering required course, it's only a two credit hour class. But students report that due to the group lab projects, it does require about a 20 hour commitment per week of study time. So keep that in mind. How do the online classes work? Again, we use Canvas where you'll find instructor announcements, class documents like your syllabus, video lectures, and homework. We also have proctored exams via webcam. We currently use HonorLock or there will be a similar program offered to you. And in order to do that, you will need that webcam and you do need an ASU Sun Card ID or a government issued ID with your picture. If you have any discussion outside the class, your faculty will post you to either a Piazza or a yellow, yellow dig type of platform. And all of the labs really are modeling software where you will use a remote connection or online simulations. You will be required to buy a lab kit for uh, EEE 202 and EEE 334, which is your circuit series. And that will be posted in your syllabus when you get to those classes. Here are some hardware and software requirements. So the desktop or laptop, if you have a Mac, you're going to need to run Windows. So you'll need a, a program like Bootcamp, something like that. Of course, high speed internet to be able to stream your video lectures. Firefox and Chrome are the recommended internet browsers, and again, that required webcam. Webcam. These are recommended computer specifications. We did reach out to our IT folks to say, hey, what's going to be the minimum requirements to be successful? And these are what they gave, gave to us. We are not here to advertise Dell. It's just part of what they offered to us. So this is the information that we were given. There is an ASU online campus workshop for transfer students. It's one week long. There is no cost to you. It's dynamically dated, so there are frequent start dates, and it's recommended to students to take prior to your first credit-bearing ASU online class. So for all students um, outside of these other two populations, you would take ASU 11. If you are a Starbucks student who has their tuition paid by Starbucks, it's ASU 10. And for any active duty military or veterans that are watching this video, ASU 42. Important note, if you are considered a first year student or a first time freshman, you will be required to complete the one credit hour ASU 101-EEE, the ASU experience for electrical engineering students. You do not need to take this workshop because much of the information will be covered in your ASU 101 class. ASU 11, 10, and 42 are traditionally for the transfer students with 24 credits or more in transfer. 
paying for school. I'm not a financial advisor. However, we do want you to know how much it's going to cost you to go to school. So you can go to the financial aid and scholarship services team to help you out in that regard. Here are a few links. We encourage you to um, you know, estimate the cost of your attendance, learn about your loan options, search for scholarships. And if you have any questions, you're certainly welcome to reach out to them via telephone. Federal financial aid requirements for credits per semester. If you are going to be full time, you must take a minimum of 12 credits a semester. If you're going to be part time, it's a minimum of six credits up to 11. If you are a military student on the GI Bill, those hours pertain to the same thing. So if you need to be full time, it has to be 12 plus credits. If you're going to be part time, it needs to be at least six credits to 11. Please note that the number of credits per session is not used in the determination for funding. The entire semester is included. So remember when I mentioned how A and B overlap C? That's one semester. So let's say one semester you choose to take one class in session A and one class in session C for a total of six credits. That's your semester right there. You don't have to worry about taking six in A, six in B, et cetera. For those of you who did not transfer over the equivalencies to Math 117, which is college algebra, 170, with, which is pre-calculus, or any of the calculus classes listed, listed in the major map, you will be required to take an Alex math assessment. To, and the scores here, 0 to 60, means you'll be taking college algebra, 61 to 75, pre-calc, and 76 to 100 is calculus one. There is no testing out of math um, at ASU. And if you've transitioned over a different type of calculus, let's say you took brief calculus as a business major, that does not count. You still have to take the Alex assessment unless you have the prerequisite of Math 170, uh, which is pre-calculus. The academic calendar is very important for stu students to be aware of. Most of you that are reviewing this video have attended college before and understand that universities have ad drop deadlines, tuition refund deadlines, individual course withdrawal deadlines, and then full semester withdrawal deadlines. These dates are firm, so please bookmark the calendar and refer to the academic calendar frequently. A lot of students panic when they don't drop a class or they've missed the tuition deadline. There's no recourse unless there's like a very, very strong extenuating circumstance. Um, we can't really do anything about it if you miss the deadline. The academic calendar also appears at the bottom left of your MyASU. So following up, again, this particular video recording is in lieu right now of you attending the live seminar. If you do not attend the live seminar, you will not obtain a, a, an assigned advisor, nor will you receive student-specific feedback. So we strongly encourage you to contact our office and set yourself up for the live webinar to get an assigned advisor and a comprehensive review of your transfer credits. But some reminders moving forward, obviously register and complete the free orientation, or if you're a first year student, the ASU101-EEE. If you have any transfer courses that you'd like to have evaluated, please do that now. If you have no transferable math, you will need to take the Alex Math Placement Assessment. Of course, calculate your cost of attendance and consider how you're going to fund your education. And we really wish you the best as you attend. Here's some more resources for you. Um, if you are a veteran, you can certainly reach out to militaryonline at asu.edu. Again, a reminder about financial aid. Um, we do offer tutoring services um, at ASU as well as engineering. And then, of course, if you have any questions about additional programs at ASU Online, you're certainly welcome to reach out. If you'd like to schedule that live session, again, you can call us at 480-965-3424 or email us at askeeonline at asu.edu and ask to be registered for the new online student webinar. Thank you, and I wish you much success.